Uh, hello, my name is uh, Clive Scott and this is uh, part 18 of a course on Java and um, it's all about overloading. Uh, this is what I'm going to talk about. I'll start by um, mentioning uh, what a method signature is and um, then I'll talk about um, method declarations with reference to overriding and overloading and um, then some preliminaries. Uh, this is mainly about um, static imports and how they affect things. Um, and then uh, this uh, next lot down here is um, how the compiler goes about um, determining which method actually gets called when you when you overload or override methods. And um, this is where all the effort goes as far as the compiler is concerned. Uh, finally I'll show some examples and um, and in the end, I'll, I'll discuss the final checks that the compiler does. Once it's once it's found the method, um, it does some uh, additional checks on it. And most beginners um, go wrong with these. That's the typical place they go wrong. All uh, right. The um, signature of a method or constructor, for that matter, consists of its name and argument types in the order they declared. Now it does not include the return type and it does not include any throws clause or anything like that. And uh, uh, having said that, of course, uh, when we cover generics, we have to take account of what's called type parameters as well. Now, um, if two methods have the same signature and um, the array form and the variable arity form of argument are considered to be the same, by the way. Uh, they're called override equivalent. Right? And it's a compiler error if a class or interface declares two override equivalent methods. Or in the case of a class, two override equivalent constructors. Now you can have two override equivalent uh, methods if they're in different classes or different interfaces. That's okay. Um, and uh, um, this, of course, is, is is really common sense because you wouldn't know which one to call, All right? So uh, here's a an example. Got an abstract class here. I've had to make it abstract because, of course, this down here is an abstract method, so that forces that to be abstract. And um, if we pass this into the compiler, what happens is um, that first method is fine. It comes to the second method, and it says m, m, we've seen that before, uh, x, there's a char, that's a char, and that's an error. Straight away, compiler error because those two are the same. This down here. Um, returns a void, it doesn't make any difference, return type doesn't matter. If the name is the same, and it takes the same type parameter, which is a char, so it's another compiler error there. Here's a constructor. First one is uh, fine, nothing wrong with that. Second one, that would be a compiler error, because that's the same, same type in each case. Uh, doesn't matter it throws a different exception, that's irrelevant. And we get a compiler error. This down here is quite okay though because integer is that may be the same, but uh, int is not the same as integer. And uh, that's quite okay. So you can see um, um, all the methods of um, uh, this uh, class here are override equivalent. That's that one, that one, and that one. And it's only uh, that one there, which is uh, override equivalent to the one above. Uh, and you'll uh, notice, as I said down here, um, abstract, protected, return type, um, throws, and so on, they pay no part in whether something's override equivalent. It's purely the name and the arguments. That's what determines it. 